After the complete destruction of King's Ending, the last remaining Alliance troops gathered at the Wall in the North. Bartha Snow had just taken command of the North Watch when the fiery priestess Meltisand arrived. A dangerous mission stood before young Barthas, one that would change his life forever. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom full of flowers and rainbows that had been overrun by evil. Krotos and the rest of his ridiculous troops fell victim to the abominable evil and the pitiful remnants of the Alliance fled in panic before the Horde and the demons. The capital of King's Ending had fallen and was now more or less an outhouse for evil's fiends. But a hero emerged from the chaos to courageously confront the evil. Meltisand, the Red Priestess, who used her pyromaniacal tendencies for the benefit of the last do-gooders. The remaining members of the Alliance rallied under her banner, for while the night was dark and full of terrors, there was nothing a nice little fire couldn't take care of. The last few do-gooders found refuge in the north beyond the Plaguelands on the Wall of Ice that had for eons separated the Alliance from the wild and snowy countries. Here stood the troops of the North Watch, a sworn brotherhood who kept watch over the north and to alleviate the boredom, teased each other through the creation of strange rules, such as a celibate lifestyle. This story is about the leader of the North Watch, a young hero by the name of Barthas, Barthas Snow. Barthas had recently lost his brother and had become the captain of the North Watch in his place. Now he went out to track down a missing patrol. Beyond the wall in the north, what awaited him there? This is the story. Barthas had reached the end of his journey in the icy north. Before him lay naught but frozen mountains and hills. Would he ever find his banjo? Wait a minute, what's all this about again? At last you arrive, chosen one. Enter and behold thy fate. No sooner had our friend with the ragged dress style spoken these momentous words than the ground opened up to reveal a path to an ancient dungeon to which Barthas felt magically drawn. Follow me. As Barthas touched the crystal, pure energy coursed through him, and an ancient power awoke. Yet in that second, all life drained from the leader of the North Watch. Barthas had awakened something in his quest, the corrupting evil. 
it gathered its mindless undead army together for a march to the south. The only thing in its way were the North Watch and the Wall of Ice. Barthas crossed the cave and slowly approached the strangely glowing crystal. He had no idea as to what it might be. Like any good hero in a dungeon, he just couldn't keep his greedy little fingers to himself and touched the crystal. As he did, a brilliant light filled the room. When the light faded again, Barthas lay badly wounded on the ground. With his last breath, he stammered, For the watch, and gave up his life. However, his actions had set something free. Like many other heroes before him, he had inadvertently released another great evil into the world. The corrupting evil. It had long rested, unaware that two of its siblings were already awake and fighting for supremacy. Its servants awoke with it. The undead. Now they rose from their graves. Skeletons, zombies, ghouls, frights, Nosferatu, all following their vile master's plans. As well as they could, undead aren't exactly known for their intellectual prowess and are therefore sometimes referred to as the Mindless Army. They didn't forget Barthas's corpse. The corrupting evil's creatures carried his corpse forth and laid it to its final rest. Then they turned their attention to the living. The North Watch. The wall would fall and the mindless army would head south. To where the corrupting evil's siblings were already waiting. And so the ultimate evil awoke. Oh, wait a minute. The ultimate evil? Oh, no, no, that, that, that was the main game. Yes, it is news. <laughs> and so the corrupting evil awoke. The all too curious Bartha Snow had released it from its crystal prison. It felt its brothers to the south, and it would meet them very soon. But first, there was unfinished business to take care of. The icy wall to the south protected the realms of the Alliance. It had to be destroyed so that the mindless army could march. The huge ice wall was insurmountable, but an old gold mine would play an important role in its destruction. The corrupting evil had to gain control of that mine. Before that could happen, however, a mighty army would have to be raised, which of course required a thriving dungeon. Immediately, the Corrupting Evil set out to build a dungeon and raise an army of combat-capable creatures. How does one build a dungeon? <laughs> the Corrupting Evil already knew that, of course. It had no need of extravagant tutorials, but immediately went into action. But some spiders had captured the exit to the surface for their own purposes. These would first have to be persuaded to get out of the way. Kill the living! That's what I meant! Very good!
With a rattle, Bathurst went down. The enemy whispered, and moved on. The last spider lay dead on the ground. While their legs would definitely have made a delicious soup, undead simply have no need of food. Therefore, their remains were left lying where they fell, unused. With the conquest of the spider's territory, the mindless army was able to claim the exit to the upper world for its own and use it from then on. The mindless undead army had reached an impressive size. With an army this powerful, it would be child's play for the corrupting evil to destroy the North Watch. If it were able to pass the war. The corrupting evil's activities had not escaped the North Watch. Suspicious, they sent a scouting party to explore the catacombs. Here, they would experience a most unpleasant surprise. The corrupting evil's mindless army had reached the gold mine. A small group of dwarves guarded the entrance, and a rhythmic hammering and hammering could be heard coming from the depths. The undead advanced. taken the entrance to the gold mine with acceptable losses. From there, one could hear the dwarves below happily singing, Hi-ho! Hi-ho! And calling out, Gold! 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 This would soon have to end. Kill the dwarves! For Azog the Defile... Oh, I mean, for the corrupting evil. Thank <laughs> you.